especially, there we go. I knew that was going to happen. That's why I was delaying a little bit there. Sign-ups are downstairs. Let's talk about those first. Lawn mowing. <laughs> we need some more people jumping on a mower uh, to help stay ahead of this hay field. Uh, we've, we've, of course, been dodging rain. We've been, we've been doing the best we can. Thank you to those that did a beautiful job hitting everything a couple days ago. You never know from the dandelions we did, but we, but we did. But we need some new people um, helping with that. If you have time, especially we're going to target Thursdays. Uh, the cemetery board has uh, promised to have the mowers tuned up, gassed up, oil checked, always ready to go. And so if you had time to jump on a mower or bring your push mower to do a, 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 the, kind of the trimming job in the cemetery amongst the stones, that would really be helpful. A sign-up list is posted. I see one name down there already. Thankful for that. But if you'd be willing to be on that list, doesn't mean you have to do it every Thursday. It just means you might get a call. That'll get coordinated, you know, so we can do our best to get on top of this and, and really just keep this place looking respectful in terms of not just um, for Sundays, but for those visiting our cemetery throughout the week. You'd have no idea how much traffic there is. Uh, really on a kind of a daily basis of those coming to visit loved ones in the cemetery. So thank you very much uh, for that. Now, Vacation Bible School, there's, there's two sign-ups downstairs. That's two weeks, by the way, from this weekend. We'll be having our closing program two weeks from today. So it's coming up really fast. But if you'd be willing to bring some treats, that sign-up list is downstairs on the main bulletin board, okay? The big bulletin board. And then servers, people just to be in the kitchen to serve. Meals uh, are thought through and taken care of, uh, from what I've been told. So the sign-ups are just pertaining to treats and servers. Now, in your bulletin, you'll see an email. It's very important. If you would be willing to help with the Vacation Bible School programming, help with a skit, help with a class, help with games outside, all of that, um, April Prohl, who is intending to be here today and, and short notice could not be, I got a, a message from her this morning, her email is in the bulletin. Um, and so it's AJ1775 at Hotmail. That's how you reach April, and she's preferring that we use email to reach her. And again, if you just want to be a helper or a teacher or uh, just be part of the programming, even for part of it, Friday evening, uh, Saturday's a full day, Sunday morning is kind of a wrap on things. So it's a, it's a fast-paced weekend for sure, but you can, reach, you can reach April in that way. Last call for June newsletter, let's call it Tuesday noon. We really have it pretty well laid out, but if there's room there for another article, if you think out over June, if your organization or uh, uh, group wishes to get something in, we've got room for that. This coming weekend, South Dakota Synod Assembly, it's always an important meeting for the churches from across South Dakota to send delegates and be there and pray over the work of the broader church. This year is especially uh, significant, I think, because we're electing a bishop. And there's been lots of preparation since January on the conference level, uh, doing discernment. What kind of a leader do we need now? No leader can be everything. What particular skill sets are we looking for? And, and so going back to the winter, there have been chances for us in the conference to start praying over this and lifting up names. And that will come to its conclusion now. Um, Linda Wingate and Dale Hansen are our two delegates from Beaver Valley going, and I'll be there for as much of it as I can be. A daughter's wedding on Saturday has a little bit of something to say. But I am looking forward to being a part of that as well. Uh, an ecclesiastical ballot, which means picture about 500, and they can, on the first ballot, write down any pastor's name. You have to be ordained clergy to be a bishop. So there could be there could be scores of people nominated for bishop. Then the big chunk at the top, kind of the top, maybe I think it's about top 20. Don't hold me to that, but it's about that many. Are, are contacted, would you be willing to serve as bishop? And then a second ballot uh, follows as soon as they can be contacted. And so it's, it's wide open. We haven't used this method of electing a bishop in a long, long time. 
So our prayers today as we look forward to that, of course, you'll be in prayer here next Sunday as that continues, that continues in a way uh, for the church even next weekend. Finally, this is formally the last Sunday of a three-year Beaver Valley Alive campaign. I just want to say thank you to the congregation for having a vision for getting ready for 150th. That's where this all started three years ago. And now we're moving pretty, pretty powerfully into that phase three. You've given the outdoor ministry area committee lots of confidence that they can proceed with plans for putting up an outdoor worship area. We on Friday had another outdoor wedding out there. We're ready, folks. We're ready to do wonderful ministry outside these bricks. And I think that that's going to be blessed. I really do. We're less than $5,000 left as of today. I thought I'd give you the count in case you hadn't seen the thermometer downstairs. We're keeping close count, and so be prayerful about that. We're going to hopefully see if we can't come close to reaching our goal by the end of May. Any other announcements this morning? Any other announcements? Well, on this very special Memorial Day weekend, let's stand and greet one another in the name of our risen Lord. I would have you find your place in the bulletin and you'll find a Memorial Day prayer of remembrance as the way in which we head into worship today. We do worship in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Our holy and gracious God, help us to remember. Help us to remember those that stand in the breach where there is trouble and in which conflict threatens to undo your good creation. Help us to remember that you will look today and restore the that all may be fed and live in your peace. Forgive us for every sin that makes for division and for war and bring us all into your kingdom on earth as in heaven. Remain standing as we sing our opening hymn, Peace to Soothe Our Bitter Woes. prayer of the day is before us we pray together let us pray bountiful God you gather your people into your realm and you promise us food from your tree of life remind us that we are yours that empowered by your spirit we may love one another and the world you have made 
through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Our first lesson comes from Acts chapter 16, verses 9 through 15. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samosras. The following day to Neapolis and there to Philippi, which a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate of, by the river. Where we were supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the woman who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyreda and the dealer of purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and the household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my house. And she prevailed upon us. Our second lesson comes from Revelations chapter 21, verses 10, 22. 22.5. And the spirit, in spirit, one of the angels carried me away to the great high mountains and showed me the holy city of Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the light, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring it into glory and honor of the nations, but nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who practices abominations of falsehood or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. When the angel showed me the river, of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God, and the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life, with its twelve kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month. And the leaves of the tree are there are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore, but the throne of God and the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and there will be no more night. They need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. Please stand as we sing our Alleluia verse. Rise up, O saints of God, verse 5. Commit your hearts to seek the path which Christ has trod, and quicken by the Spirit's power, rise up, O saints of God. The Holy Gospel comes to us from the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus answered Judas, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but it's from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not, do not let them be afraid. 
You heard me say to you, I'm going away and I'm coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I'm going to the Father because the Father is greater than I. And now I've told you this before it occurs so that it does occur, you may believe. Here ends the reading of the Gospel. You may be seated. Would the kids please come forward for the children's sermon? I need every one of you today. (laughs) Come on up, kids. Come on up. Does it help if I tell you there's candy if you come up? I'm pulling out the stops. Now here, now see that? That baited the hook. That baited the hook. Okay. Little indecision till I said candy. Come on up. There, it's great. Fun to have all four of my grandkids in worship today. I just have to, I just have to say that's a rare thing and fun. Kids, listen to me. When you get up in the morning, what's the most important thing to remember? To get ready. To get ready. To get ready to do the day. All right, what are some thoughts about that? What's the most important thing when you get up in the morning to remember? We're going to talk a lot about remembering today. You could remember to get dressed. Get dressed, yeah. Before you go to school. Get dressed, get all cleaned up before you go to school. Good. I'm going to help you a little bit. I'm I'm going to suggest that maybe remembering people. Maybe remembering people who've yeah, like gone before you. Does that make sense? People who are older than you by a lot. For me, look, at here's a picture. I'm going to get you thinking here. See that picture? See that old guy? That's my Grandpa Johnson. That's my Grandpa Johnson. Yeah. He's not, here. He's not alive anymore. He died a long time ago. But, oh, is it? that's about 1971, maybe 1972. We've been out pheasant hunting. And look at my big smile. See, I'm the guy in the green. I know I look a little different. (laughs) You know, I got a great big smile. You know why? Because I think I've just shot my first pheasant. I don't think I did. I think my grandpa shot it, but he let me think I shot it. So I'm posing there. So I'm posing there with my first pheasant. Oh, I'd love to go back to that day. I'd love to go back to that day. But you know, it's a little dangerous to want to always go back. We have to, I have to remember that Grandpa's with me here. That that memory's with me here. And that I get to be that kind of a person. Maybe I get to be a little bit like my Grandpa. That that's a good thing. We learn from those who've gone before us. That's kind of what this weekend is about. If you step way back from it. It's about honoring the military heroes first. But it's, it's about also remembering ancestors and all those who are laid to rest. You listen to my adult sermon today. So yes, we remember, we remember brushing our teeth and getting our clothes on and those kind of b- daily details. we got to do that. But I hope as you grow up, kids, you can more and more often think of the people who've gone before you and, and say, what am I going to do today, grandpas? What am I going to do today, grandmas? Help me along here. You'd bring your past into kind of your day, that you're not alone, kids. You're not ever alone. People are helping you live your day. Okay? Let's pray. Let's pray. Dear God, this is a special day around our nation. People go to cemeteries and lay flowers on the graves of people who've gone before, grandpas and grandmas and aunts and uncles and people, people who matter to us. Help, her, help us remember their lives so that we can live today well. Thank you, dear God, that you're with these kids. Give them, give them the right kind of memories. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, how about a little treat? How about a little treat? These are quiet treats. That's kind of what the preacher always looks for. Yeah, okay. My sermon, that's, this is a sermon long sucker. If you, if you don't chew it. Here you go. Here you, yeah, take one for your brother. Yes. Here we go. There you go. All right. There you are. There you are. All right, thank you. Here, here, I heard that. Different color. (laughs) Can't get in trouble with my granddaughter. 
I want you to hear one verse from John 14 first before my opening prayer. It's the one sentence I'm preaching on today. And it has to do with the word advocate, that the Holy Spirit helps us remember. Listen to these words. Verse 26 of John 14. The advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and help you remember all that I've said to you. Let us pray. Dear God, we look back and remember history can be a wonderful teacher, but dear God, our past can haunt us as well, and they can be too important and trap us back there. May your Holy Spirit help us remember the good things and carry them into this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, it seemed to me on this Memorial Day weekend that we spend some time with the whole topic of remembering. We're given that lead, I think, in the Gospel of John. Hopefully you all received this little just this little handout. I don't know if you remember everything about where this Memorial Day practice began. I think it's a pretty good summation of that. You obviously can take it home with you. The first Memorial Day wasn't called Memorial Day. It's called Decoration Day, and it started, well, who knows where. Six communities argue that they started the practice. Interesting that one of them was in the Deep South where the Union and Confederate soldiers both were honored. This is a day in which flowers are laid or strewn was the word used officially flowers strewn on the graves of those who'd fought in the civil war well you can imagine um, how easily that was adapted or changed uh, when world war one took place and so many hundreds of thousands of americans uh, went to war so many giving their lives in service to protect really not just our nation, but the world. And so then it became more broadly a remembrance for those who had served in all wars, appropriately so. And I would argue that we've even taken another step as a culture in terms of what this weekend means. I think it's fishing and camping and softball tournaments for many. I won't make much more of an editorial comment than that. But I think it's actually a great time to go to the cemetery and remember all who have gone before. My grandfather was a Lutheran pastor, did not have the honor of serving in the military. He would have if he had been called. Other relatives have. But to remember my grandpa Johnson, as I did in my children's sermon, and, and to, to join my dad tomorrow, if I can, and go to four cemeteries and lay little sprigs Dad brings a bucket, and so it's the great-great-grandparents, and we remember at that tombstone again. And we go to aunts and uncles and my cousin Jimmy, who died way too young. And, and so we, we walk and we tell stories, and we decorate the graves of all of those who've gone before us. Even my brother Mark and sister Anne, we'll go there, and we'll lay flowers there. And we'll remember quietly, and we pray that God will help us remember well. That's the title of my sermon. Not just remember, but to remember well. And so it becomes a prayer, I think. Dear God, help us remember well. Because you know what? It's easy not to. It's easy not to remember well. And let me just say that in the way of an introduction to just two thoughts. That two things challenge us in terms of proper remembrance. One is that we look back so fondly at the past, we just want to stay there. And the other is that there can be hurts, uh, unkind words, um, acts done to us um, that are so poignant. It's like they still happened yesterday. We just can't get free from the hurt and pain to really live in this day with a kind of freedom where you breathe deep and there's real joy. Sometimes people are trapped as they remember too much. They remember too much the slight or the insult or the hurt. Let's take them in that order. Sometimes we remember the past too profoundly. For instance, it's almost as if we worship the past, convinced it's so much better than the present. I hear people talking a lot more maybe than I, in my remembrance 
in my ministry about how I wish they could just go back. They don't even want to be in this day. Can't listen to the news. The word in academics actually is nostalgia. When a person lives, wants to live in the past and go back, that word is nostalgia. And it's not a good remembrance. Joan Chittister, she, she wrote this famous book called The Gift of Years, warns against the live in the past remembrance. She writes, Nostalgia is a dangerous temptation to confuse love for part of life with love for all of life. It substitutes the delight of the present for the fantasies and remembrances of the past. Nostalgia is not memory. Nostalgia is pining and yearning and longing for what was good for us in the past. The seduction latent in nostalgia is the temptation to take refuge in what is no more. It's gone. Rather than to face the realities of the present with good humor and brave hearts. It's a snapshot of the past, edited to suit us. And so she uh, writes this. For instance, we remember the days on the old boat. We remember fondly the days on the old boat. But conveniently forget the trouble of cleaning and hauling and rowing the thing. We remember the beloved dog. We remember the dog. But we forget the barking and the jumping and the damage it did to the couch and how many times we tried to give it away. <laughs> See what nostalgia can do? The burden of nostalgia, she writes, is that it takes us out of the present and immobilizes us in the past. It really can do that, can it? The burden of nostalgia is that it takes us out of the present and immobilizes us in the past. The danger of nostalgia is that it forgets the voice of God speaking through the prophet. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that's the most important day. And we, yes, we look back with great fondness at the good memories. And I think the boat can be a good memory. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean those days on the boat with Dad and my brothers can't be things that make me who I am now. And, it, and it's not wrong to remember Grandpa. I want to be back in that 1972 field, kneeling there with him and feeling his hand on my shoulder. It's not wrong to remember. It's just we can't stay there. We have to let those things become, help shape who we are now with our own kids and our own grandkids and our neighbors and this world that is beautiful. It's still beautiful, still worth redeeming, still worth our best, best, best gifts. Well, there is a second way of remembering that is I'll even use the word destructive. Often I visit with people who are remembering the unkind word or the unkind act. Through the years, the memory of a wrong leads to a kind of bitterness and the inability to remember the good. Sometimes an inability to forgive the one who did you wrong. And I have to add, sometimes a memory of our own failing that we just can't forgive ourselves. That can keep us from living this day well too. So any kind of remembering that keeps us from celebrating this day and living our baptisms with the best we got is what we want to be able to name as we talk about this gospel, as we talk about the invitation to hear the words of Christ that the advocate will give us and live as Christ in this world. It's all of our calling. So St. Paul, for instance, says, forgetting what lies behind, I press on toward the upward calling. Uh, forgetting as in, not in, I'm going to forget the abuse of a parent or an uncle or a grandparent physical, verbal, whatever it was. It's not that you forget it. It's not like it gets wiped away from your memory. It's that it doesn't own you anymore. It's that you say, God, I'm done with that. I need your advocate. I need the Holy Spirit 
to take away the sting. Now, I remember those words my dad said. I'll never forget those words he said in a weak moment when he didn't really mean it. Help me remember all the times my dad said the things he really meant more. Remember the kindnesses that get lost sometimes if the pain is held on to too long or too profoundly. I think we keep getting back to prayer in this kind of a this kind of a day, that we can pray that the advocate will help each of us break out of negative remembrances and get to a kind of Sabbath peace that God wants for us. That phrasing is used in the Gospels as well. My peace I give to you. God wants us to live in peace. That's how Mark Buchanan, in his book, The Rest of God, put it as he writes about the importance of remembering well. And quite frankly, it was this paragraph that gave me the the title of the sermon. And remembering, remembering well without nostalgia and without bitterness is the necessary groundwork for living a life of faith. Just that sentence one more time. Remembering well without nostalgia or bitterness is the necessary groundwork for living a life of faith. Well, here we are on the sixth Sunday in Easter. It happens to land on Memorial Day weekend, and Jesus is promising us that the Holy Spirit will help us remember the past as we ought to. All of the good and some of the bad, remembered properly, allows us to live lives of faith. Not wishing the good old days would come back, but letting our clear memory of good old days shape and guide us into this day So that these become the good days. These are the good days that our kids and grandkids and great-grandkids will talk about. And not letting bad in the past carry too much weight. The great invitation is to let God deal with it. Name it. Name the person. Name the thing. Name the moment. And say, God, I've cut it in half now. The rest is up to you. Simply let God, the advocate, carry us into our days. The good from the past, a wonderful teacher. That's a great way to think of it, I think. The good from the past, our teacher. Now, for this day. The bad from the past, dealt with. Done. Over. All of this, that you and I the ones who go and decorate the graves of our beloved ancestors know just exactly what the Advocate wants us to know, that this day is the gift. It's where our past, remembered well, leads us. Dear God, thank you for the promises of Easter. Amen. Shall we gather at the river? We sing together.
The words of the Apostles' Creed are our profession of faith this morning. Please stand as we join together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation may be seated at this time. Receive your Sunday morning offerings and the children's offering is received here on the front steps of the altar. Congregation, please stand. Thank you. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Dear God, this is the day. And you have made it. Help us to bring the good from the past into our living for others. Help us to be honest about the pain and hurts of the past as well. Name them, pray over them, give them to you so that we, too, can press on into life. Lord, in your mercy. Dear God, we pray for the many who need our prayers as they go through hard times, especially those who battle physical illness. We are thankful that Tim Joris has made it through surgery and they're discovering the path forward for him. Continue to pray for Beulah Parkinson and Jeffrey Hammer. Many prayers through this weekend for Janet Anderson as she battles to recover from her surgery. Continue to pray for young Jordan Ramazani, Deanna Christensen, Sheila Walters, Don Ward, Nick and Jaden Johansson, Maxine Johnson. We're thankful for her successful surgery this week. And all of those we lift up before you in our prayers. Lord, in your mercy. Dear God, we pray for Gary and Patty Parker and family upon the death of his father, Gerald Parker, who was laid to rest just this past Thursday. 
Thank you, dear God, that the church is alive. It is sustained by you. Lord, in your mercy. And dear God, we celebrate marriage. We're thankful that Jessica Gross's mother, Cheryl Ward, and her new husband, Thomas Foster, have asked for prayers of blessing upon their union. Bless and keep them into their years. Lord, in your mercy. And dear God, we continue to pray for farmers. Protect them, mind, body, and soul, as they do their work. We pray, dear God, for sunshine and wind so they can get on with, with the important task of feeding this world. Lord, in your mercy. And dear God, we pray for Veterans Day celebrations and remembrances all across our nation tomorrow and so many here in this community. We pray that we would pray proper respects to those who are willing to serve and some having given their lives in active duty for this nation. Help us, dear God, to be a nation that can be trusted, be a nation that is known for its wisdom and for its courage. Thank you, dear God, for those who have fought and served. Lord, in your mercy. And dear God, we continue to give thanks for our young graduates, graduating from schools again all around us. We are thankful, dear God, that you're with them as they go. You'll give them eagles' wings if they but ask and if we but pray. We pray that they would go out and be carried by a faith that's deep-seated, planted by years of Sunday school and prayers of parents and grandparents, and it's there. Sometimes we wonder, but it's there. Thank you, dear God, that you are with us from generation to generation. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. We have worshiped in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Hope that you all can stay for coffee hour downstairs following worship. Our closing hymn, This Is My Song.
Go in peace, serve the Lord.